Okay, good afternoon. Sorry to push this back a little bit today. Um, and so we'll go back to our regular time on Mondays. Uh, this won't be the regular time. But uh, I do want to start with the quarterback, TJ Finley, and we announced him yesterday. Uh, real quick on him, just proud of him uh, and all those guys, you know, through the competition and looking forward to seeing him prepare himself this week and get out there and play. Um, Nick Brahms, so Nick Brahms is officially done with football now. Um, I think that's been a few questions that, that has come up. Um, he tried after last season, you know, he had the injury going in the bowl game and then uh, came back and um, just not there physically to be able to go out there and play and to really to play at the level that he wants to play at. Nick has been at every practice. He has helped our players out. Um, he has helped the old line out. He'll continue to keep doing that. So uh, I'm very proud of him just for his efforts. And uh, one thing I told him, you know, football ends. It always does. It just and it's usually not on our timeline that we want. So um, his future is bright, and he's going to help this football team. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, I'll give you one injury update. And then moving forward, what I'll do is just talk about season-ending injuries. Really, if uh, somebody's not able to play for a significant amount of time, I'll let you guys know that. Uh, one guy that will not be playing in the first game, he had his knee scopes, Zykavius Walker. Won't be in that first game right now, but uh, he's looking really good, and hopefully we get a speedy recovery and get him back. Uh, but uh, he won't be available for this game. As far as the game goes, just Mercer, uh, they scored 63 points, had 625 total yards. And, you know, that's hard to do. And I think that's uh, something that uh, their team, we looked at them last year. Um, you see it this year again. They're well coached. Uh, Coach Chronic does a great job with that group. Um, they play hard. They're physical. And they're very balanced when you look at them. Um, and so in all three phases, they had a, a kickoff return for a touchdown. And, you know, they certainly have our attention when it comes to getting prepared this week uh, and having a game to watch. You know, I think that's something that, um, you know, we're going to take advantage of is, is being able to watch their first game and then get our guys prepared and ready to go out there and play. So uh, most importantly for us, it's a chance to go out there and get ready for a game. You know, there is no more scrimmages. There's no more spring games. Um, we have a deadline, and it's this Saturday. We get a chance to go out there and play. And I'd say everybody that sits in this room is excited about that. You get to a point in camp where you're just tired of hitting each other and, and doing the same things, and now we get a chance to – to go out there and play somebody else and to be at home in our stadium, which we're all looking forward to that. Uh, so I could tell last night at practice, like the energy was different. There was an excitement that this is the week we get to go out there and play. And uh, I'm very proud of our coaches and players and all the work they put in to get to this point. And now it's time to go out there and, and get ourselves prepared and ready. So this is their day off. Tomorrow we'll be back out for a padded practice. And we'll be focused on that and just getting ourselves uh, geared up for having a great day tomorrow. So. With that, questions? Again, raise your hand, and then when you're called upon, please state your name and affiliation before your question. Brian Wilson, the World Sport. With the name of TJ Finley as a starter, how much evaluation will go into the quarterback situation going forward? Is there a lot of gate on that job, or will we'll just have to feel that the guys put together subsequently determine who might be the next player? Yeah, I think I know what you're asking. I mean, we're always evaluating our guys. He's he won the starting job, and that's the focus going into this week. Um, beyond this game, and and not to create any controversy or any issues, but it's football. You never know, right? You have guys at other positions. You guys have the depth chart. Shedrick Jackson is our starting X wide receiver, and Marcus Harris is our starting D tackle. It's, it's really the same thing. I know we want to focus on the quarterback. It's all the same to me. Um, you know, you got to go out there and play well. I think those guys all know that at the end of the day. Uh, it doesn't mean that other guys in backup roles don't want to play, and it doesn't mean that at the end of the week, we were kind of joking about it earlier, I mean, we're a strep throat away from somebody else being a starter. right? So this depth chart right here, I mean, that's the reality of our world. Guys get sick, something happens. Um, and by Thursday, I told the team in here too, you might be the third string guy, and then come Thursday, a guy gets sick, and you're the second string guy. And then he goes out there in the second play of the game. He rolls his ankle. You're the starter on the third play of the game, just like that. And so if guys are sitting in here and, and are pouting about not being in the position they want to be in, then they're not going to be ready when their moment's 
called, and they get that opportunity. But TJ's earned it. Uh, those other quarterbacks, they all competed. They're not going to stop competing. They're not going to stop working. They're gonna, not going to stop trying to prepare to go out there and play uh, because they all know. I mean, you're one play away. That's just the reality of it in football. But as far as practice goes, TJ's going to get the majority of the reps. He's going to be out there running with the Blues, and we're going to focus on the game plan, what we have to do, and, and let him go operate and, and know that, hey, we got his back, and this is his opportunity to go out there and prepare himself for Saturday and then hopefully play really, really well. Yeah, Brian, with Zach, I, I know you mentioned he was sort of still catching up with some of the shoulder stuff in spring. What, what's sort of the message to him right now, and, and what do you sort of think that he's hoping to work on to sort of in his role and sort of stay involved? Yeah, well, he, I mean, he's got his message from Coach Keesaw. I mean, that's not something that, that I'm going to share with everybody. I mean, that's part of – because you got to go back. These guys are all – this is really important to them, right? Every guy's getting coached up. And we don't go through every everybody on this list and what the expectations are day to day like we do with our players. We're not going to do that publicly. Um, Zach's no different. I mean, just keep competing, keep working. He's got things to work on. So does everybody else on our football team, and um, no different for him. But for all the guys that aren't in the starting role, keep your head up because it changes so quickly. And. Special teams is a big factor. Guys, we have guys that are backups on this list right here that will be starters on special teams. And the one thing about the way we, we transition in and out of personnel groups, offense, defense, and special teams, I mean, you're going to see a lot of guys that may not be starters on O&D. They're starters on special teams. They might end up being starters in that game um, in the second half. So you just never know. I mean, it's football. we got our roster, and these guys are ready to play, and we're going to keep continuing to prepare them that way so that when they get their opportunity. My goal is when a guy steps on the field, everybody's excited, all right? The other 10 guys are excited that he's coming on the field and that he goes out there and he really seizes the moment because I want every single guy on this team to be successful. So when you get your chance, hey, I don't care if it's the guy that started or it's backup and all that, we want to see you be successful and we want you to go out there and experience that and then also help your team, you know, win a football game. So. Every one of these guys knows that for me, that we're going to keep coaching and we're going to keep helping them. Um, we do focus on that first group because they're going to get a little more reps. But you also have your backups. And as, as coaches, you're always going to be focused on those guys and getting them prepared. Brian. Yes, another TJ question for you. Um, you mentioned that you charted everything the quarterbacks did uh, during fall. Um, did Coach Keesaw did, yeah. I didn't personally, yeah. I didn't personally, but we have people that are charting all that. Did you keep up with his accuracy and how they compared to what he did uh, last season, which was 54.7%? Was it better during your 11 on 11 period? Yeah, it was better. Yeah, and you hope, you know, your quarterbacks are above that, right? You want to be in 60 plus percent. If you start looking at stats and all those things, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, what kind of completions are you getting? You know, and that was the one thing in practice. Practice is different than the games, right? After a while, you're going against the same guys. And you're kind of running the same plays. And at some point, you know, you're, now you're really asking your quarterback to be accurate because he's going to have to put it in a spot that the guy already knows he's trying to throw to. Um, I think he did a really good job. And then you go and look at all the individual periods that we did. And, and I look at just his fundamentals and really all of our quarterbacks. You know, how is their feet? How's their upper body? You know, what is, what is Coach Keesaw and, and that group on the offensive side really teaching these guys and coaching them up on? And I'm a part of that, too. So the accuracy piece is better. Um, I think, you know, just his overall mechanics. And, you know, earlier today, I got asked the same question. And, and I would say this, you know, people, people improve. All right. And that does include quarterbacks at Auburn. All right. They can have they can improve. They can get better. And it's amazing that what a guy did last year, they're not the same players. They're not the same guys. And we just go back to what you have, you know, video on you have last year. And I get that. You're comparing it to last year. I get to see him every day since last season and what he's done. So um, we've moved on from last year with every one of our players. Guys improve. They grow. Competition brings out the best in you. So you bring guys in. You bring a couple transfers in. You bring a, a high school player in that's a really good player in Holden. And what competition does, it brings out the best in you. And so I see that with a lot of our guys. And you know what? We got good players that are on the two deep in this depth chart here. They're going to keep competing, and that's going to bring out the best, hopefully, in our players. And no different for TJ, but his percentage is better. I think he's um, done a good job fundamentally to get his 
his mechanics and all that where he can throw the ball and he's worked a lot of different techniques where he's going to be better in those areas. Coach, did you say have some guys that had really good preseason and stepped up and improved their stock in the coaching staff's eyes? Did we have some guys? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think um, – Gosh, you know, I mean, it really, it's 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 all these guys here on this two deep. To be honest with you, I know guys have played, and um, it, that's hard. I know what you're asking me. It's hard for me to think like that. I don't really think that way uh, because where Owen Papo is at is different than where Tavares Dawson's at. Okay, so Owen has to like that much for Owen is really hard to get him that much stronger, that much faster, that much better. I mean, just that tiny little bit for Owen is is so hard to do. You know, Dawson's like the size of this room from where he was, right, is how much he's grown. And so everybody in their own way has made improvements. And that, to me, is what, what I look at because you got to challenge guys differently. I mean, I don't expect our elite players to play down to a level um, – because other people around them aren't at their level at that point. I expect them to push themselves and, and play at an elite level. I expect the guys that are just solid to get up to an excellent level. And so everybody's different. And that's coaching. That's the thing. You have three different guys. You have one position group, three different guys at the same spot, and they're all at different levels. And you're trying to get them to a point where they can help us win, all right, and they can get on the football field. So um, I think everybody's made progress in a lot of ways, and, and I don't think – a lot of guys that we had here last year it went backwards in any way. They're stronger, they're faster. Um, I think their football intelligence is better. Their preparation habits, you know, they're, they're doing things that, that we just didn't do last year. They're seeing things that we didn't see last year. And I think their effort at practice is better than what we had the previous year. So to me, everybody's making progress, and those young guys are coming along. And I would say that some of those freshmen, you know, we have the four games. Don't count them out. Those guys somehow are going to find themselves in the mix somewhere along the way. We'd like to play them at some point. So they just need a little bit of time, a little experience. I thought the other day we went out there, we had the crowd. It wasn't many people. It's not going to be like it is against Mercer. And you could see there were some jitters. You know, some of those guys that hadn't you know, been in that stadium with people in it on the football field. That's different. They've come to games and watched what the other guys on the field did, then all of a sudden you're down there and there's just a few eyes on you. And you start, you know, you see a little different mechanics and it's like, all right, relax. But you have to go through that and experience it before you get out there in front of 88,000 plus. And, you know, to me, I thought every one of those guys grew in different ways. So, I mean, I thought we made progress overall. Brian Stokes. Uh, Brian, quarterbacks, not just CJ, any quarterback. Are there specific things beyond the, the obvious and Completion percentage and all, all those things, but are there specific things that make one quarterback uh, effective and able to win? Yeah, I do. I think I think toughness is a huge part of that. I really do. Um, if you really study that position, I think that is the number one the number one trait that you have to have. And you watch the really good quarterbacks, and and nobody cares about this stuff more than maybe as much as I do, but 10 years of, of study in this position and talking to NFL coaches and watching NFL quarterbacks and college quarterbacks and high school quarterbacks and talking to college quarterbacks and talking to NFL quarterbacks, um, the number one thing for me is toughness and that you're not flinching. And watch the guys stand in the pocket. You know, I had a really – coached a really great one, Brett Rippon, who's with the Denver Broncos. And if you ever watched him play, I mean, he'd stand right in the pocket, a guy's barreling down, he never flinched once. And now, I mean, it cost him a couple times. You know, I remember his ribs and his chest and his shoulder pads. We had to fix those a few times. But, you know, just guts and tremendous toughness to sit there and stare down and throw a ball right over the middle when a guy's coming barreling down on you. And I think that's one of the, the key ingredients to being successful at that position. So it's really hard to, to gauge that in practice because you don't hit your quarterbacks. You can throw stuff at him. We throw brooms and bags and balls and all these things like that. And either you got it or you don't. And I had a, a quarterback tell me that one time, like, you can throw it at This is an NFL quarterback. He's like, Coach, you can throw whatever you want at me. Either you got it or you don't. You're going to stand there and you're going to deliver when a guy's coming right down, barreling down on you, or you're going to flinch and get on your back foot and flick it and, 
that ball might sail on you, and those end up being picks. So um, accuracy is a big part of the success of a quarterback, you know, just uh, from what you said before the stats. But you better be tough, and you better be able to handle the crowd. You got to be able to handle all the ups and downs of the game. You got to be able to lock in and do your job, call the plays. Um, you got to get yourself up really quickly when you get knocked down. Um, I mean, those are all things to me that, in my experience, watching watching the, the best play that position, I think that's one of the number one things they've had. It's just the toughness piece. Brian Stokes. Yeah, Coach. Uh, um, how did TJ find out that he won the job? And what was his overall reaction? Yeah, I think anybody that was at our practices knew that he won the job from, from a while ago. I don't think there was any shock yeah. um, whatsoever. But, you know, hey, ready to go. I mean, it's really simple, like, all right, let's do this, ready to go. And that's that's what I like about TJ. I mean, it's kind of the guy's been taking number one reps since January. I'm not sure that he was really surprised yeah. by it. Um, but nonetheless, you know, hey, let's roll. It's time to go. Watch. Alan from the other day. Um, what did Alan Green mean to you as an athletic director? And what does his departure leave behind for the program? Yeah, well, you know what? Um, First thing for Allen, you know, just because I mean he's very well accomplished to get to this point and where he's at, um, and so you know I know that's not easy, and and certainly you know I think about he and his family. Uh, I'm very appreciative, number one, uh, because we joked about it in here, you know, at the time we met and those things like that. I mean I knew Allen Green when he was at Buffalo, and we got a chance to talk, and it wasn't one of those just. Um, it wasn't a joke, let me say that. You know, the first time we met, I mean, it was a serious conversation. I mean, here I am talking to a guy, and I'm like, wow, this guy's, you know, really locked in. I like what he had to say. You know, I told you before, we're kind of at two group of five schools and trying to make it and trying to figure it out. You know, where do we stand? What are the things we got to do to help improve our programs? And then all of a sudden he's at Auburn, and, and we're having a conversation about this job. And, um, and I appreciate his process. You know, I felt like through the interview process, he, he did a great job of asking the right questions, um, telling me things I needed to know, uh, making sure I had a heads up, you know, on certain things and, and really recruiting. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? You're, you're interviewing, but you're also recruiting. You're, you're doing those things. And, um, and so I always, I always thought that process was done very well. And then working with him here, I mean, I got to see him lead. I got to be a part of the uh, head coaches' meetings. I got to be a part of the all staff meetings. Um, I got a chance to, to go in there and um, give my thoughts and opinions on on things. And you know, you're running 500 student athletes and coaches and people, and um, that's no easy task. I mean, just on our staff, right? You got people that you're trying to lead. You got teams you're trying to lead, and, and they all want to get better. They all want things that sometimes you can provide and sometimes you can't. Um, but you still got to lead. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm appreciative of of this opportunity because of him, and I'm appreciative of his leadership. And you know, now you know for us, it's it's time that you know he's made his decision, and we're got to move forward, and we got to get ready for um, for Mercer, and then you know get our team to go get our team to go out there and play well. I mean, that's really what what we have to focus on right now, and uh, certainly. I know that he'll support that and he'll support us and, you know, wants to see us succeed. So to me, it's um, kind of where we are right now. Joseph. Brian, uh, the only or among the starters on the depth chart is Keandre and Cam at right guard. Uh, do you have any insight about what your guys' plans are using those guys, both of them maybe, or, or just kind of generally how Stutz kind of got in, in, into that battle? On that did, did you put the or on there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, both guys. Both guys have been back and forth. I'm just messing with you. All right. Both guys are really in that role right now. We haven't decided at that guard position. Um, and I would say too, you know, just let's let's talk about the O line here for a minute. Tate Johnson. Tate Johnson's had a really good camp. And Jalil Urban has done a really good job. And Jalil can play anywhere in, on the inside. Uh, I think Avery Jernigan has really come on too. He's starting to kind of come and do himself a little bit as far as a player and figuring out, um, you know, how physical he can play. So it all starts there. 
Uh, it's good to have Brandon Council out there. I'm glad that Jeremiah Wright came back to the offensive side. Uh, so I'm proud of him for that. And then uh, between Keandre and Cameron Sutts, those guys have been back and forth. Both guys are. Uh, Cameron's really had a great camp. He had a great spring, too. I think he's one of the, the more improved players. Uh, and I think physically, he's changed his body and he's gotten himself in really good shape from where he was to where he is right now. And I'm really proud of him for that. And I think that's going to be a big difference for him when he goes out there and plays. Keandre, same thing through camp. You know, he continues to, to build himself into, into shape that he needs to be in to go out there and play. He's strong. He's played before. So we'll see. We'll see how this week goes between those two guys. Um, Trox has done a really good job at right tackle. And really, Brandon Coffey uh, is another guy that's made a lot of improvements. He's very athletic, and I think he's, he's done a really good job putting himself in a position to get out there and play. So, um, yeah, between those two right now, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, you know, if they both play in the game, that'll be fine, too, because they can both go out there and do the things we need them to do. Okay. I wanted to ask, uh, get you to talk a little bit about Tate, uh, just with, with Nick out. Talk about his traits, his strengths, and is there some concern if, if he's still 285, is he a little undersized against some of the other guys you're going to see? Um, no, I think he's plenty strong enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the weight that will continue to come. You know, that We don't stop lifting until we're clear. We don't stop lifting when the season begins. We don't stop developing. That's still part of the, the plan for these guys. We're still getting guys stronger and faster and bigger throughout the year. But I think he's done a really good job of understanding what we're trying to do on the offensive side. So at center, you're making a lot of calls. You're redirecting. You're getting everybody on the same page. you got the snap count. you got all these things you got to factor in. Um, and I think he's handled that well. I think we early on, um, you know, when Nick wasn't out there, he's getting more reps, and it's like, okay, you're getting thrown in right now, and you're you're starting to really play a lot of plays more than he had in practice before. And then I think after that, he started to get kind of into a groove a little bit. So, uh, and Jalil's helped him as well. You know, Jalil's been he's played that position, and Jalil's helped. So those guys are working together. I think Brahms has really helped both guys. And then uh, Avery is another one that, you know, continues to keep making progress at that position too. But Tate, you know, Tate can do it. Tate can go out there and he can make the calls. He can see the field. Um, I think he's actually moving really well too. And for some of the things that we want to do, I think he's running well. I think he's landing blocks. And so, you know, there's that component to the game too that we really need at that position. Um, is their center playing well? And I think he's done a good job so far. Yeah. Brian, has Robbie put himself in a position to still contribute for you guys in these in these first couple games? And I guess I know you said TJ is going to mm -hmm. command most of those first team reps, but yeah. what do you kind of assess of, of Robbie's role right now? Yeah, well, we'll see where Robbie's at too. I mean, all those guys um, right now. I mean, the focus is on TJ and getting that that group really going because we've had multiple quarterbacks taking reps. Right, we really haven't had a ton where just one guy is getting the majority of the reps. Uh, I'm really proud of Robbie, though. I think he's come a long way as far as just his development, his understanding of what we're doing. Uh, I think Robbie's very talented, and he'll continue that, too. That's the one thing where Robbie's at right now. Robbie's not going to stop developing. And so no different this week. You know, We'll see when we get this game plan really honed in for Mercer how he goes out there and executes it. And he's, you know, he's ready to go. He's one play away, right, to be out there. So he's going to get plenty of reps. Plenty of opportunities to keep proving himself. And, you know, he's got to get that mentality now. And this is the hardest thing about being a backup quarterback is you got to prepare like the starter. You don't get all the reps. You're not getting all the attention. You're not going into the game knowing that you're the starter, but you're preparing like one. Because, again, all it takes, you know, in one snap, it can change, right? Something can happen. All of a sudden, you're on the field and you're the starter. And so he has to prepare like that. And no different for our other quarterbacks as well. You know, I think Holden, I mentioned that. The other day, he's coming on. I think he, he's doing a really good job of just now understanding what the expectations are. Uh, I thought being out there at the open practice was good for him, just to kind of get out there on the field and be one of those guys that hasn't been on the field with really people out there, all right, in that moment. Uh, not very often, at least. And so, you know, I feel good about where he's at as well. And then Zach continues, you know, to keep developing himself and improving. But um, I'm excited to see both those guys, TJ Robbie this week, and see how they operate, just really dialed into the game plan and um, see what that looks like at the end of the week going into the game. 
Ryan, you, you got five guys listed just on the defensive line that, that hadn't, hadn't taken a true game, <clears throat> game rep in this defense. How vital is it to, to get those guys on the field, get them some playing time to help build some of that depth? Yeah, we need them. <laughs> That's why they're here and they want to play. They've, you know, they've been playing against our offense. They've been, they've played before. So to get them out there, I mean, we need them. And, you know, the D-line, that was one of the areas that we really wanted to um, improve and bring in some guys in here and, you know, guys that could play for us. I mean, you got Jason Jones out there and um, Eku has played, Colby's played. You got Morris that I think's done a really good job. Um, and Jeffrey Emba continues to get better. Marcus Bragg was a really good addition, and I like his maturity. And he's a guy that's really stepped in there and has brought a lot of value, and he'll play for us. So you got to have you got to have that too deep on the D line, and so they're all going to play. They're going to rotate in. I don't know exactly what the rotation is, but all those guys will be out there playing. And from what I've seen, and I think what Jimmy's done with that group, you know, we got a good group on the D line, and I feel like those guys are just excited to get out there and go play and. Do a great job up front. Help the linebackers out behind him. Um, hopefully, get to the quarterback. If there's any throws in there, we got to get to the QB, and they can provide some pass rush and do their job in the run game. But um, I think right now, I mean, at this point, experience. Uh, I think the excitement overrides that right now, just to get guys out there and play. And, and that's one thing when you haven't had a much experience. Well, how do you get it? You got to go do it. And we got to trust our guys to go out there and do it. So we got to believe in them and cut them loose and let them go out there and play. And uh, from what I've seen so far, they know what they're doing. And you know, do I expect them to be perfect? No, but I do expect them to go hard and and be physical out there when they play. And I think that group has shown that to me so far. Coach, last season you guys ran for 316 yards in the season opener against Akron, 680 yards combined in the first two games. Was that by design? Maybe how the games unfolded. Those are pretty good stats, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely by design. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, we really are. I mean, that's, you, you want to run the football. I think that's one thing that, that we'd like to do, and we'd like to be balanced. You know, Mercer had 359 yards rushing and 266 passing. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. You know, I would say that's pretty balanced. And by the by the score, I mean, you can see why they ran the ball at the end of the game more, just because the score was just so different. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you'd like to be balanced. You'd like to say you could run the ball. You'd like to say that you can throw it and, and do all those things and be balanced. So um, that is the goal. How that goes, you know, that's really up to us and, you know, the team you're playing too. You know, what is their game plan? I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll see what their game plan for us is when we step on the field. But we want to come out and establish things on our offense where you know we are doing some of the stuff that we've been practicing, running the football, throwing the ball, being balanced, and and our guys are executing. You know what it is we're trying to get done on the offensive side. Got time for a few more? Anything else? Coach, just wanted to ask you about uh, Jason Jones playing nose tackle. You got him listed at number one. Just what he's brought from Oregon. Just a local guy from Calera having a chance to start Carl Auburn on the defensive side of the ball. What he's meant for this team. Yeah, well, Jason, I mean, look at him. He's 6'6", 328 pounds. I mean, he brings size. That's number one. He brings length, you know, to that side of the ball. And then Jason, Jason's one of my favorite guys. I, I really do. I think he's, you know, he's, he's highly intelligent. Uh, he works very hard. He's very coachable. Um, I, I think he's really prepared himself to go out there and play. And just from what I've seen in his whole process, uh, it's been very good. And I think that's why, you know, he's going to be out there playing number one, but um, why I think he's going to go out there and play well too. Like he just, he just has that mentality of getting himself prepared and to go out there and play the way he needs to. And, you know, on the defensive line there, I think that's brought out the best in Marquise Burks. I think that's helped him. I think Marcus Harris is one of the guys that played for us last year, but he's a better player this year. I think he's really improved in those areas. Um, and so the whole the whole defensive line, Colby Wooden doesn't get enough credit. You know, I probably need to talk more about Colby because, you know, what he does on a day to day basis, he's so consistent and he's getting better. And so, you know, he's just one of those guys that probably we all expect that from him, but I don't think we all understand how hard it is to do what he does. And when Colby's going, man, things are good. Like he can he can make a huge difference. 
on the defensive line. Then your edges, you know, Derek and Eku out there, those guys are both really good. So that anchors the each side of the D-line. But uh, all those guys, Jason, you know, has had a really good summer, had a really good training camp, and now it's time to go out there and, and let him play. And I got no doubt that he'll he'll do his job and, you know, expect him to play well. Could you finish with two quick ones? Good bias and then Mark. Good. Coach, when you look at your receiving core all together, where have you seen the most development over the last, say, two weeks? And how confident are you in that? Yeah, I think the depth has helped. I think bringing some of those guys in uh, has really helped with the competition in that room. I think it's brought out the best in other players. So, like, the best in Shed and Malcolm Johnson, you know, some of those guys that have been here before. And so I feel like we got better depth. I feel like we got better speed, and I feel like those guys are competing out of practice. And that's one of the things that stood out. And I think um, Coach Hilliard's done a really good job creating that mentality amongst the group. And what I mean by that, when you get out there and you're throwing routes on air and the ball's slightly behind a guy, like they're actually they're catching it, they're snatching it. It's, they're making it more of a game-like type um, session than just reaching one hand out there and kind of sticking it back and, oh, I can't catch it. They're really trying to go out there and execute the plays on air or whether we're going against the defense. So to me, we're more competitive in that room. Um, I think we got better depth in that room. I think the competition has brought out the best in some of our guys. And, you know, now we got to go out there and, and execute it and do it on the on game day. But uh, I do like that room. And I think the versatility they give us um, as well, just knowing what we're trying to do offensively so we can move guys around, I think that helps us. Last one, Mark. Yeah. 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 Anders, if he chooses to, yeah, I kind of leave it up to Anders. All right. He's uh, I think he's got more control over that than I do, really. And he looks great. He's he's uh, he's kicked off. Um, you know, I've been really really impressed too with Alex McPherson. A young player, I think he's he's done a very good job. Um, Evan McGuire, you know, he kicked off for us last year too, and he's another one that out there at practice, you know, has also done a very good job. So I, I feel good in those areas. But Anders, right? He's he's a very good player, and uh, he's ready to go. Then he'll be the guy out there kicking off for us, and I fully expect that. Special teams, uh, Coach Ballantoni has done a, a great job of getting these guys all bought into playing on special teams. And just the way that he describes how important that is to the guys and, and what we're trying to do, um, those guys that want to play at the next level, their future, having a chance to really learn all these skills and techniques because that's only going to help them at the next level. But uh, I think... You know, the things that we've been doing uh, in our drills and some of the skills that we've been teaching our guys has really helped. And I see improvement in our special teams. I think we got really good specialists, but I also think that we got guys out there that want to play on special teams. And, and to me, like, that's the sign that you have a good football team when you're getting guys out there that are starters on O&D that are wanting to be out there and still finding a way to contribute to helping us win. And, and right now, we, we have that. Um, this is also an...